Two of the following videos are true while the other one is trash. Can you spot the fake? Season 3, Episode 7. Round 1, let's begin. If you take some ivory soap like this and place it in the microwave, the soap will expand as it heats up, creating a hot fluff that looks like this. This is a plumbago shrub. Plumbago is the old fashioned term for graphite and that's no coincidence. Taking a segment of the branch and starting to whittle, you begin to see the thin core of graphite. Whittling it down further and then using a sharpener and now you've successfully made a wood pencil just like how they made them in the old days. This is a paper beach ball. Air can't permeate through the paper and can only enter or leave through this small hole shown here. If I unfold it slightly and then whack it over and over again, more air enters than leaves with each whack. And so the paper ball slowly inflates over time until it becomes a full ball. There's no special one-way valve, so to deflate it, you can just squeeze the air out of the hole. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. It's true that microwaving ivory soap causes it to expand into a hot fluff. Ivory soap has a unique amount of air and it actually floats in water. It's those many tiny air pockets that expand as it heats up. This paper beach ball, which is a Japanese toy, actually does inflate with repeated whacking. The explanation for this is a bit complicated, so I'll put a link to one explanation that I found in the description if you want to learn more. But apparently, even though air does leave with each whack, more air comes in as a result of the reduced pressure after. This is not a plumbago shrub, I made that up, and these branches don't have graphite in them. I simply bought a pencil that looks like a stick on Amazon. Here's a quick recap to help you follow before moving on to the next round. Next, it's time for round two, a special blurred round. The regular rules still apply, I'm just gonna blur a critical scene to make things interesting. If you take a glass bottle and fill it to just below the neck with water and grip the bottle like this, you can strike the bottle with your hand and the bottom of the glass bottle will break. This weird glass container has multiple different sized tubes, all connected at the bottom. It's a device that shows how a liquid column's height corresponds to the pressure at the bottom of the container. So if you fill it up with water that's been dyed blue and then place it so it's right side up on the table, you can easily see how the height of each water column is the same, regardless of the diameter of each tube. If you place a dollar bill between two glass bottles where one is balancing upside down like this, you can quickly pull out the dollar bill without causing the glass bottle to fall. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. It's true that striking a glass bottle like this with your hand can cause it to break, although I don't recommend this for pretty obvious reasons as you could definitely hurt your hand. The jolt to the bottle causes a partial vacuum at the bottom of the glass bottle and this reduced pressure causes cavitation. When the vacuum collapses rapidly, this sends a shock wave that breaks the glass. I wasn't able to get it to work with these larger glass bottles, but it did work when I used a rubber mallet. You also can quickly pull a dollar bill out from between two glass bottles without the top one falling. And this is a much lower stakes party trick than if you try to do the classic one of pulling a tablecloth from a table, which will probably result in disaster. It turns out this video was fake. The water actually reaches the highest height in the smallest tube and then lowers as the tubes get larger. This demonstrates the effect of capillary action, which is caused by the attraction of the water to the walls and to itself. Here's a quick recap to help you follow before moving on to the next round. Next up is round 2.5, a bonus trivia round. Frogs are incapable of detecting small changes in temperature, so if you put it in a pot and slowly bring the pot of water to a boil, the frog will die before it detects any danger. The following is the correct order of the size of planets in diameter from smallest to largest. The smallest is Mercury, followed by Mars, Venus, Earth, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter. Saturn, of course, we're not including the rings. Identical twins have different fingerprints. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. While you pause to think, I wanted to let you know this round came from my Two Truths and Trash trivia deck, which is a card deck with 50 new rounds of Two Truths and Trash. It's available for purchase now on my website twotruthsandtrash.com and it's a great game to play on road trips with your friends and family. Anyway, it turns out it's a common myth that you can slowly boil a frog without it noticing. The frog would simply jump out once it gets uncomfortably warm. Now it's time for the final round, round three. If you take a AA battery, you can touch the negative end of the battery to the touchscreen on your phone and it works, just like your finger or a stylus. If you place a Cheerio in a shot glass of water that isn't completely full, the Cheerio sticks to the sides of the shot glass. But if you add some water until the shot glass is completely full and almost spilling out, the Cheerio will move off the wall and end up right in the center every time. If you ignite a lighter at the opening of an empty plastic bottle, the flame propagates as it consumes the trapped oxygen and lurches the bottle forward, just like a mini rocket. 
you've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. You actually can use a battery like a stylus, although it isn't exactly comfortable and you could scratch the screen. But this just works because the ends are a conductive metal, not because it's a battery in particular. So even aluminum foil would work, while these cotton socks wouldn't. To make gloves that work with touchscreens, conductive material is often added to the tips. Filling up a skinny glass of water does cause floating objects to move to the center. To better see why, let's look at the classic surface tension experiment of adding drops of water to coins. You can fit a surprising amount of water on the coin without spilling, and you can really see the curve of the water due to surface tension. The highest point of water is in the center, so when a small floating piece is added, it wants to float to the highest point. Adding some food dye to the water to help you see it better, and even if I try to move the speck to the outside, it returns immediately to the center. The same concept applies to the shot glass, but it's less pronounced. I also tried with the larger diameter glass and a floating golf tee, and it still seemed to work pretty well, although this time it took several minutes for the tee to settle toward the center. It turns out lighting a lighter at the opening of an empty water bottle won't cause this giant flame to happen. I actually just poured a few drops of isopropyl alcohol inside the water bottle, swirled it around a bit, and it was this flammable and volatile substance that actually caused the water bottle to move forward. Here's a quick recap of the final round. Thanks for watching to the end, and I'll see you next time.